Woo. Good evening. Welcome back to Frugal Outdoors with myself, Dylan. And obviously we're out fishing tonight. I'm a little bit out of breath. It's a fair old walk. I'm fishing at Brook today. And it's quite a walk to the mark that I wanted to get to. The conditions look absolutely glorious. It's really warm today. It's like still 21, 22 degrees. Hence I'm still in a t-shirt. And it's nearly seven o'clock. So I need to get some stuff set up real quick. I'll show you my baits and everything uh, in a little while. Hoping that we can get into a smooth hound. I was supposed to be fishing with my stepson Jacob today, but he wasn't able to make it. So I thought I'm not going to change the venue. We'll come down. I was hoping to get him, him into a smooth hound. So I'm going to try for a smooth hound. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Uh, there's also a chance, a very small chance of a, uh, of a taupe. So I've got some mackerel. Uh, maybe a bass. I mean, last time I fished, I didn't do too bad. I fished it quite a few times. And I haven't done too badly each time. But having said that, there's always the next time, this time, it could be awful. So let's get some gear set up. We'll go through our tactics. We'll go through the rigs and get a bait in the water. I'm really looking forward to this one. It's so nice to be fishing out. Very little wind and the sun's still, the sun's still shining. Lovely. Right, let's get on it. So the first, uh, first rod I'm going to quickly get set up. It's this old Cron bass again. I really like this rod. I know I've banged on about it, but it served me really well. I mean, you know, if a proper experienced fisherman was to pick it up, you know, they may love it, they may not like it. Just so happens I really like it and I've got into quite a few fish on it. So I'm gonna be fishing with that, which is 13 foot. Oh, and you'll all be pleased to know that I've serviced my reels. I took them all apart, all apart, I took them both apart and uh, washed them all out, took all the cogs out, took everything apart, including, which I do not advise doing, it was alright once I figured it out, but the anti-reverse clutch, I took that apart and uh, yeah, that was fun. But uh, yeah, they've taken them apart and um, totally re -grease Every, every junction that's got metal on metal or plastic on metal and oiled every single bearing. And uh, yeah, they sound all right. I'm hoping so anyway, we'll see. We'll see if the mics pick it up or not, but they're certainly much better because one of them was really bad. Must have had some sand in it or something. I mean, I must admit, I don't really look after my fishing gear very well. But hey ho, and I've got some new lines to show you as well. And the second rod that I'm going to be using today is my heavier of the two Diowas. Again, I'm going to be chucking out some pretty decent sized baits in the hope of a taupe. And I know, you know, this is far beyond my casting ability, this rod, but it will definitely get a heavier bait out there for me. And if I hook into something, huge then obviously this is going to get it in no problem at all and i'm fishing with like say my standard shimano's which are hopefully nice and smooth now which are the power arrows which i hasten to add i did buy second hand i didn't buy them new far too expensive for me to be buying stuff like that new but if you have got the money they're a superb fixed ball fishing reel super light for their size they're really, really light. So this, this whole setup on this rod is a fraction over a kilo. And when you consider some lightweight rods are 700 grams and the reels to go with them are also 700 grams, this is really, really light. So it's a really lightweight setup, but it's a heavy fishing setup. So on here, my new line, which I've seen all over the internet at the moment. And actually it was, out of stock everywhere apart from one person on uh, eBay uh, and I've got the new Asso Knight now I, I have got to say if other people are using it please let me know how on earth you tie a decent knot with it because I found tying my leader knots I couldn't get it to cinch down at all so I've had to revert to a, uh, a uni double uni leader knot because uh, I just couldn't get it to cinch on, a, on an Albright and every time I pulled it tight, I snapped it. 
This is 25 pound, low diameter, so it comes in at 0.4, which is really quite low for a heavy grade. You know, when you consider something like 16, 18 pound is 0.36, which is what people some, sometimes use for their light fishing gear. I know people use lighter, but I don't see the point. I don't want to lose any rigs in that sea. If I get a snag, I want the best chance I can get of actually getting it out. I could use 50 pound braid, I know that, but I've got really into using mono at the moment and I'm preferring it at certain venues at the moment and it will change, No, undoubtedly it will change in a couple of weeks, who knows? But I fluctuate between mono and braid. Right, so there we go. Let's have a look at some uh, other bits, shall we? Oh, there we go, sitting down. Trying to rush through this so I can get a bait in the water. <laughs> Never seems to be a rush though. I'm rushing, but I still take gauges. Uh, so first off, first off, I am going to chuck out. What am I going to chuck out? I haven't brought my bass rigs. I've forgotten to bring my bass rigs. But what I have got, which I used on my last session, is the up and overs, which is going to, you know, essentially, it's a clipped up running ledger, really. Um, so rig body, quite short, 650 mil. I've got a swivel and then a quite a long armed uh, clip. I don't know what you call those. Rig clip, it's not a rig clip. One of those. Um, and then obviously it goes down to a bead. I've got another rig clip with not the arm. An imp, uh, another swivel. And then I've probably got there, what should we say that is? It's about 900 mil a metre. So give or take three foot of trace, it will be smack bang on the deck. But it does mean, like I say, this part in the middle is effectively, if I hold on to the right bit, is effectively a running ledger. So let's get that baited up. I think at the moment we've got a 3.0 wide gape and a 3.0 full circle. And I believe that's 60 pound on everything. So baits tonight are, uh, I've got some Kraken Sea Baits uh, whole squid, the C6s. These are a little bit more defrosted because I bought them this afternoon and basically they've been defrosting uh, since I got home. Uh, I've also got some uh, whole Joey mackerel and I've also got, should we just stick that hole? Yeah, let's do it. Got some whole joey mackerel uh, and I've also got some frozen spider crabs, peeler spider crab. But I am gonna stick this on whole, why not? This could pick anything up, could pick a bass up, could pick a smooth hound up, could pick a ray up. It's a pretty big squid in all fairness. It's a lovely looking squid actually. I keep the head on it. Loads of whipping, it's on my bait tool. I know I go through this every time and I'm sure some of you find it boring, but I was speaking to uh, Sharon, who I fish with in the Danglers, and she said she really appreciates me showing each time how I'm baiting up and stuff like that. So, and I'm sure some of you, some of the other people will appreciate it as well. Gives me something to talk about anyway. So I'm finding out, I've got my hook, my 3.0 in the bottom of it. Might be a bit undersized hook to be honest, but it'll be all right. The beach has actually changed since I last came down here. Some of the sand's washed away. Still got this black sand here, which is the stuff that gets in absolutely everything. And then I'm gonna pop my 3.0 circle hook in the top, pull it down, and there we go. Look at that, that is a huge bait. I'm gonna get this straight in the water now. And there we are, there it is, all clipped up. It's quite a big bait, nice big sandy bait. The one thing with the bigger baits, and using imps is they definitely do have a tendency to come unclipped, but I'm not really that fussed. I mean, the amount of times that my bait comes unclipped, you still catch a couple of fish. But we're fishing the tide up, and uh, we've got another hour of the push, I reckon. And we're gonna probably be fishing for about five hours, maybe two hours up, three hours down, something like that. But let's get this one out. So a five ounce gripper today. There we go, it's just come undone. I don't know, it's maybe 70 yards or so. There we are, we're fishing. 
I will quickly just show you this line before I uh, chuck it out. So it's the, it's the, the Knight with a K Asso. Um, it's really supple. It's a lovely looking line. It feels great. But like I said, I have struggled with the knots to be honest, but like I said, I've got two leaders on there anyway. Um, but obviously the idea of it is it's so bright that in the night time, it's going to be really visible. It's obviously quite visible in the daytime as well. Not so much, no line really is. But the idea is that you can just flash your light on it and you can see what's going on with your light. You can see which direction your lines are going. And obviously being that I've got a 60 pound leader on there, it's not going to put the fish off or anything like that because they're not going to see it. All right, let's pull that back on. Got, uh, what have I got? I've got um, Sakuma, Sakuma 60 pound leader. Let's get this one back, get another rig out. But yeah, we got one out, whole squid. But I need to set my drag, which I haven't done. Right, fast as we can. Uh, really heavy rig, this one. All right, so I'm probably gonna be alternating this. I'm gonna fish with squid and crab on one side all night. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll just try and fish with mackerel all night on the other side and big, big hooks. See if we can't pull a giant out. Might be a big, big ray or a small ray, even any ray. There might be a, a conger. So quite big hooks. I believe that that is either a 6.0 or a 7.0 wide gape hook. In fact, actually, I know what it is. It's a 6.0. It is a 6.0, and that is also a 6.0. Full circle, and that's on 300 pound braid to a really heavy duty swivel. And that's 100 pounds, one mil thick, uh, mono. Uh, and then, then basically it's just a, a normal pulley rig. So I've just quickly snipped off the head. Well, just the nose of this um, Joey mackerel. Oh. And the tail, quickly bind it up. Stick a whole Joey out there. Can leave that out there for a bit. And then I'll reduce the sizes, because like I said, I just want to get a bait out there, get some scent in the water. The tide's on the push, it's a really good state of tide to be fishing here. And then obviously when that crab defrosts, I can think about putting some crab baits out there. And obviously then I'll just, I will use a bit smaller baits. It's a little bit oversized. You never know. I'd say the whole idea today was to go out and try and actually get something really big for Jake, but he's not here. So there we go, lovely big hook, nice and proud. We'll bind that on, bind it to the braid. Nice, it's always nice to know your hook's sharp, isn't it? So I picked up a little bit of weed on there. There's a bit of weed on the high tide line. And as I was walking back, because I was talking to the camera, I let the line drop. So I've got a nice chunk of weed on there, but it's all right. It's not actually playing up at all. So there we go, and I'm just gonna put that circle hook. Obviously it's a little bit harder because because just because of the shape of the hook. Down the body a little bit. There we are, two giant hooks, nice and proud. Hold Joey mackerel. Let's get this one out. And there we are, because like I said, I am fishing really big baits, and last time I did, I think I had about 10 casts with a big bait, and every one bar one did come on clip. So I have actually got Splashdowns, having said all of that earlier, but splash down on the big one just to help it stay in there, really. And we're going to stick this one, stick this one over here. My lead is a little bit short, to be honest, to be getting a massive drop, but got enough of it on my finger. And I think we'll just go down here a little bit. Because let's say if we do get into a hound, I don't want it to tangle in my my rigs. There we go. And we're out. Oh, hello. Ah, and there we go, fishing. Ah, oh, chuffed. To be honest, I've probably cast that one a little bit too far to the left. Certainly got a lot of distance in between the two lines, so I don't think we'll get a tangle, hopefully, but yeah, I could have probably done with keeping it a little bit straighter, but hey-ho, I've got this whole stretch of beach to myself, so 
it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do now, hopefully these crabs have defrosted. If they haven't, I'm going to help them defrost by trying to take some of the shell off, try and let some of this lovely warm weather get to it a little bit. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get a uh, going to get a hound slash uh, bass bait sorted out. Uh, obviously, a little bit smaller this time. Two huge baits out there, certainly for me. But yeah, let's see what happens, shall we? Listen, listen. Oh, <laughs> I'm stuck in. Oh, there we go. It's out. Can you hear that? I'm so happy about that. Hear how smooth it is. No clicking, no grinding, no wincing. Just nice and smooth. Well, there we go, that's the whole squid in. Something looks like it's been having a little munch on it. I've got a feeling it was getting pecked at by something small. But that's all right. Change over. Let's put, a, let's put this crab out. So I've got four crab. It's gonna give me eight baits. So the way I'm thinking is basically that means I can alternate between crab and squid. Probably make the squid baits maybe a little bit smaller, but there we go. Again, it's on a five ounce gripper on the bass rod. It's not gonna go massively far, but like I say, it will go far enough, hopefully. I mean, I could probably have my, my rods a little bit higher, to be honest, get it out of that swell a little bit, save it a little bit from the weed, but it's actually not too bad. Not picking a lot of stuff up, so. We can live with it, that's for sure. But let's hopefully, yeah, let's hope we can pick something up. It's absolutely lovely out here. I am, like, the back of the island for me is a really, really exciting, pleasant place to fish. I can look up and down, I can barely see anyone, and I can barely see a thing, like buildings and stuff, you know, it's just so wild. Love it. Right, I think, let's have a reel of this one in. Let's see what this reel sounds like. I'm hoping it's gonna be as smooth as the other one. Yeah, it is. Oh my God. Best thing I ever did. So basically all I did is I bought some, uh, I think there's a bit of weed on here or something, it's quite heavy. Uh, just bought some um, real, real grease and real oil, uh, which was like uh, six quid off of eBay. And then yeah, took them all apart. It's worked a treat. Oh, a little bit of weed on the end of my leader knot there. Like I say, because now I can't tie, because I'm not tying my normal leader knot, if I've got a bit of weed on there, normally I could pull it through, pull it through my tip eye. But I'm not able to do that now. So yeah, hopefully some of you guys are using this and you can tell me a knot, a knot to use or a knot to look up. There we go. Right, oh, something's been having a little chomp. That is completely, completely in half. Dare say something's bit that. It, whole joey mackerel and it's in two pieces really should put my glove on let's do that always find that a glove does uh, a cut finger stall um, 
does give you that little bit more confidence in the cast. Like, sorry, I am fishing with a 60 pound leader anyway, so it's fine. It's, it's easy enough to cast without anything, but yeah, this certainly does make life a lot more easier. Right, let's get this one out. Bit of movement there still. Try and give this as much, much line as I can. There we go. That's as much as I can give it. It's a little bit short really, but never mind. Let's see if we can't get this one out a little bit better. Not quite so high. Yeah, that's out there. Big old bait. <laughs> I've got to be honest, chucking a big bait out is a lot of fun. <laughs> but I don't want it to be at the detriment of not catching a fish. I do enjoy fishing uh, and I enjoy catching anything, as you all know. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. Thing is, if you don't chuck a big bait out there, you're not gonna know if, you, if there's one of those big tote cruising past or a big undulate that might take that whole Joey mackerel big conga or anything really we'll see glorious All right, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a look at this crab because there's been a few little bounces. There's no swell coming through at the moment. I'm still getting a few little bounces. So I'm just gonna have a look at it. I've got another one ready to go out anyway. So let's just see. Might be a nothing, might be something, might be nothing. Might be a little. I think there's something on there. I think we got a little, little conger, I reckon. Because there's definitely something on there. I say that and there'll be nothing, but oh, I can't hear that reel. What bliss. Let's have a look. What we got? Or is it like you're saying nothing? No, I think there's something in there. I think it's a, I think it's a conger. Can't see it, but. They do like a bit of crab. No, it's just gone really light, so. Maybe it was nothing. Ah, yeah, there it is. Knew it. Little strap conga, and I reckon it's been on there for a while because that blooming hook suit looks awful. But anyway, let's get it unhooked. There we go. Tiny little strap conga. We're not blanking. It's exactly what happened the other night. I had a load of these on the crab. But anyway, let's get another one out there and hopefully we can get something a little bit bigger. Yeah, hopefully there's not gonna to be too many of those out here. I mean, I don't mind catching them. I'd rather be catching those than nothing at all. Cause you know, it means you're doing kind of something right. But, uh, whoops. Yeah, let's see if we can't change it up a little bit. This one, I think I'm gonna pop in a little bit closer. I absolutely whack that one out there. But this one I'm gonna try and keep in a little bit closer and see if, uh, yeah, see if we can't pick up a little wandering bass or something. So again, it's only, it's only a little small crab bait, half a peeler spider crab and, and a small one at that. I'm just gonna give this a little flick. There we go. Hopefully that will pick something up. 
sun is just going behind the clouds as well, which is quite nice. Right, let's see if uh, this rig is salvageable. Leave that here, I think, just in case we need it again. Might get away with it. Let's have a look. Wow, one fish in. Managed to salvage the rig as well, which is nice. Double checked it, make sure there's no kinks or anything, like I say. Did lose a fish on the last session. I can only assume it's because, although I said about checking, the, checking the, the traces after catching a smooth hound and stuff, I thought I had, but clearly I didn't check it all the way down to the knot because it went on the knot um, where the hook was, which is a real shame because I lost it, but it happens, it's all right. Um, but yeah, that one seems to be okay, so got it untangled reasonably easily and it'll be ready to go out again. But I'm looking up and down, there's a few anglers down to my left, I say a few, a few meaning two. Um, I haven't seen anything come out as yet, but I haven't really been paying much attention. And I passed another few anglers on, on the way down, but they're right around the corner. But I haven't heard any hollering anyway. Not like last time out. Ray, Ray catching a ray, stingray. On a piece of mackerel as well. On a tote rig. So you never know, it could happen now. A lovely bit of swell coming through here now. A lot more than there was. So obviously this one that I've cast in close is now right in the thick of it. I mean, it's only a couple of feet, but it's nice, it's rolling through. I mean, it looks fishy. I mean, I always say that, it always looks fishy. I'm always boggled that you can go fishing in the sea, which apparently has loads of fish in it and not catch anything. And it happens quite a lot. <laughs> well, we haven't been doing too bad of late, so. Hopefully you've been enjoying all the videos. It was really nice to take Bill out on my last session. Managed to get him into a hound, which was lovely. Seeing the smile on his face, catching his first hound was absolutely awesome. And it uh, definitely brings back the memories of when I caught my first hound. I was stunned at how well they fight and how strong they are. But yeah, massively appreciate all the support as always. And we've surpassed the 4,000 subscribers now, which is great. So yeah, thank you all. So as I was saying before, I'm gonna fish with the mackerel on one side and crab and squid on the other side, on the lighter side. Uh, just because if I do get a smooth hand on that bass rod, it's a lot of fun. Um, and you have got to play it a little bit. It feels like you've got to play it a little bit more anyway. Uh, but likewise, I am keeping every other cast quite in close. But I think what I'm going to do with the mackerel side, which is the furthest one away, is one that sun does go down. I think I am going to change it up. I mean, the sun is still up at the moment, so we've still got probably another half an hour, 45 minutes before it sets. So maybe another hour, hour and a half of actual light. Um, it's only just gone half past eight so far. I've been fishing for just over an hour. And then I'm gonna change it, I think, to maybe the uh, the dongle loop rig, I think. So I can have the a dongle bait on the top and then a, put, a panel on the bottom. And then probably just fish with, well, I'll just have a mixture of baits, I guess, on that. Always have a bit of crab on the top. And then I can alternate with the bottom hook, maybe some uh, mackerels, maybe some squid, maybe another piece of crab. Maybe a bit of mackerel and, and squid, who knows? But um, yeah, I think when the, when the sun goes down, I'm gonna start mixing it up a little bit. And that's when I'll try really hard as well. I mean, you know, I am trying now obviously, but it's more of a case of just chucking a bait out, sitting down. Really the first sort of couple of hours of finding out, for me, is finding out if there's any fish there. If there are fish there, what type of fish are they? What are they feeding on? So it's a mixture of baits going out there at the moment. 
hopefully we can figure something out. If we haven't hit anything when it gets dark, then that's when I'll fish really hard. Put a, a rig out there that's got two baits on it, which means I've got to work a little bit harder baiting up. And I'll be a bit more regimented on my bait changes, because at the moment, I've, like I said, I've been fishing for just over an hour. I've only recently had my second cast with a Joey Macro. I'm leaving them out there for 45 minutes. Obviously, when I change that bait, or change that rig to something else, I'll be changing that every 20 minutes. So it means I won't be able to sit on my backside for as long as I am at the moment, which is rather pleasant, but just playing the waiting game. But we'll keep fishing as we are for a bit, and then we'll change it up. I can't hear these reels at all. They're so nice. I've been really struggling of late. My last session was basically the last straw because they were absolutely, both of them awful. One of them especially so, but... There we go. Come on. Let's chuck another one out. We'll chuck this one a little bit further. It's another crab bait. I'll tell you what I'm going to do first though. I'm going to tangle this rig up with my other one because that's always fun. There we go. There we go. Take that drag off. Hopefully, I'll be basing up in a minute and I'm going to hear my line ripping off. We'll have a nice bass or a hound on. So far, it's a little quiet, one little strap conga. But as we all know, it can change so quickly and easily. We might get into a couple of fish. There we go. What was that? It's the second time it's gone. It's only the, uh, I'd say it's just a, a crab bait, but it definitely doesn't look like a, a sort of a hound bite or a bass bite. Just uh, getting another rig ready. Just getting another bait ready now. I've got one big mackerel as well, so I've just taken the side off, trimmed it up a little bit, and I'm uh, getting it ready for the uh, for the big mackerel side. And then that's probably going to be my last big bait on it, to be honest. We'll have a little bit of fun, fish with something else, fish with some smaller stuff, see if we just can't get something else. Temperature is starting to drop as well. I forgot my hoodie as well, but fortunately I've got a, my work one in the uh, in the van. Because otherwise I'd probably be going home quite early. Right, give us a couple of turns. That's moved quite significantly that line. There we go, look at that. Nice big fillet of mackerel. Just gonna trim off that bottom there just to make it a little bit neater. There we go. And that hook's really nice and proud. Just gonna bring this in, because I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, hello, we've got some weight on here. Have we? I think we have, yeah. I might have been it sticking to the bottom then, actually. I do feel like there's something on here. Could just be a bit of weed, but... Thought I was getting a couple of little... No, I've got a feeling it's probably another little strap conga. Trying to trash my trace. 
trying to trash my rig. Yeah, what we got? Something. Uh, yeah. And it most definitely has trashed my rig. Cool. That's always fun. Right, let's get this one off. Get another bait out there and then we'll sort this mess out. You're not supposed to eat it, mate. You're supposed to you're supposed to have a bass on the end of it. Not a little blimmin' conga. Just quickly, before I chuck this one out, you can see there, look, I've pimped this one up. So there's lots of dangly bits hanging off that. That's all crab legs. So I'm hoping it'll just add a little bit of something. But like I say, at the moment, it's just attracting congas. Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? There's a rig in there somewhere. Well, there we have it. The sun has now dropped. Still in a t-shirt. And I'm still untangling rigs. It's actually not too bad. I think we'll get it. I say that and now I'm stuck. <laughs> Mission. It's actually not too bad. I can't remember what line I'm using, but it's pretty decent, like I say. I mean, that was absolutely a tangled mess and it's straightened out really quite well, so we shall continue. Right, so we'll just quickly bait this. And then I'm going to change that mackerel again. It hasn't been out there quite so long as the last one, but like I say, that sun has now dropped, so the light is going to go. And I want to get that one out while there is still a little bit of light, to be honest. I don't know why. Just feel like that's the right time to try and put it out. Get a few little bounces on that mackerel as well, so there might actually be a little conger on that as well. But just get this crab bait ready. There we go. A little ball of joy. Look at the juices. There we go. That's a bite. That was a definite bite. Ooh. Thinking about it, whatever that was. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Could just be another stroke of conga. <laughs> Done a couple of bites. I thought that was a bit of a better one. It looked like it was going to start running off. I've got another crab ready to go on it anyway. And I'm just sorting out the, uh, the rig for the other side. Yeah, I think there's something on there. I think it's another strap conga, you know. I've got no swell coming through there really at the minute and it's still bobbing. There we go. Something on there. I think it's probably another conger eel. Yeah, it's wrapping itself up. There we go. Yeah, well, we've got a little bit of weight anyway. Oh, got reasonable little bit of weight actually. Like I say, it's probably only a little conger. Oh, 
Uh, whatever, something went really light then. What's going on? Maybe not, maybe it is. Whoa, whatever it is has came in on the surf. Might have just been a bit of weed. No, we've got something. Yeah, another conga. Ugh. Gah. God damn. Three of these now. Three of them on really expensive crap. Right, so we're definitely switching, switching tactics now. And I've, I've already rigged up the uh, the crib, the crab, the crib, the crab part of the dongle on the loop rig. And I've just got a squid head and guts here. I'm just wrapping a few crab legs to the side of it as well, which will just sort of hold it a little bit more together. And I'm going to put that on the panel part of that rig. So fishing much smaller now compared, well, compared to my last couple of casts anyway. So just going to reduce the size on that one. Still going to fish a reasonably decent sized crab bait on the other side because I'm convinced there's got to be a smooth hound or a bass out there that's going to take it. You know, if you're not, if you're not, you've got to have a bit of confidence in what you're doing. You? We might not get one, but we've got to give it a go. Right, it's time. I'm going to chuck out this, um, this dongle loop rig. We had nothing on the mackerel all night. So it's time to change it up a little bit. I mean, I've been fishing for, I don't know, two and a half hours. I've only had three casts on it. Uh, four casts actually, sorry. So it's been about 40 minutes, eight casts out there. And not a sausage. I mean, bearing in mind the crab is only picking up some uh, strap congos, but at least it's something, you know, it's something to keep you busy. And it makes you feel like you're doing something reasonably right. But the mackerel, nothing at all. There we go, hopefully you can see that. We've got squid head and guts with some crab legs on the bottom. And then we go just there, we've got a lovely bit of crab on a dongle rig. Basically all the hooks on this are size 2.0. So they're much smaller. So we've got a size 2.0 full circle on the dongle and then a uh, 2.0 wide mouth and a 2.0 circle on the panel. So let's see if we can scratch something out. That was a much better cast from me there. Oh, hello, he says. When well, he gets it all tangled up. There we go. Nice and straight and reasonably far. So I'm hoping this can pick up a smooth hound, a bass, anything at all really. Something, something other than a strap conger, but. I say this is one of those venues that sometimes bass are at distance. So every, a lot of people always say, flick it in, flick it in real close. And it, and it is the case here as well. But the last one that I had here, it was a distance. So I say distance, mid range or something anyway. But the th my point is you can hit it far, still get into bass. But potentially I can still get a smooth hound. At the moment, I'm just trying to get a, a decent bend in the rod. If I catch a smooth hound, brilliant. I'll just drop everything a little bit closer in and just focus on trying to get a uh, on a bass but at the minute anything will do well we've still got a couple of hours to go sun is now properly gone it is now officially night time so i like to think i think the tide started to pull back a bit as well and pretty much this is the same sort of time that it started to kick off the last time I was here. Whether it's going to happen like that, I don't know, but we can but hope. Got into a few little strap congas early on then as well in the daylight. I think I just picked up a bite then actually. Yeah, on the right hand rod. But it seems to just be all strap congas at the moment. Oh, that's a better bite. That 
was a better bite, wasn't it? Here we go. This is that small bait again. So what I'm gonna do, I think it's probably another blooming strap conga. So we're just gonna leave that like that for a minute. Sort the other bait out, because that's what I was doing. Because I don't think I need to be in any hurry. There we go. That looks like that's a bit better. Definitely looked like a bit of a better bite that time. Let's have a look. I don't know if that's the weight of the fish or, or if we were stuck in. Yeah, I think we were just stuck in then. We got something on though. Oh, it's a bat. Well, we got something. We definitely got something. Oh. I think we might have a little hound on here, you know. No, it's not moving anywhere. I don't know. It's got a bit of, got a bit of fight to it. It's probably just a, a, tight, a strap conga that's just a tiny little bit bigger. You see something? It's right in front of me. I think it's just another conga. Go and have a look. There we go. It's actually not too bad a one that time. At least I need two hands to try and hold it anyway. But there we go. All right, it's conger eels, but at least we're getting into a few fish. That was on the bottom hook, that was on the panel, which was squid. Squid and uh, crab legs. So let's get this one in get another bait out there. Uh, I think it's due a change anyway, so let's have a look. Oh, in again. There we go. Well, there's nothing on it. But it definitely was in a snag. <laughs> Do you know what? I've, I've found more snags tonight than I ever have while I've been fishing down here. Oh, what? God, got another one. Right, I think what I'm going to do with this right hand side, the bass rod, is I am literally, for the rest of the session, we got hour and a half ish I'm just gonna fish really close what is that nothing I wonder if that's um if that's actually showing up the lines really nice and easy to see I can see exactly where they're going, where they are, where they're going down towards the water. <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't help uh, to see where the fish are. Oh, there we go. That was definitely a better bite. There we go, go on. That looked like something a bit more interesting. Mm, I don't know. And there we go. Another little conga. Not quite as big as the last one, but it's a reasonable one. It put a little bit of a bend in the rod, put it that way. But that's conga number five now, I think. So yeah, 
we've definitely found the uh, the conger eels for sure. Yeah, been pestered by them really. I mean, it's nice, like I say, it's nice to be catching fish. I don't mean to be uh, ungrateful for it because I'm really not. Uh, but when you come out, you obviously you have you have ambitions of trying to catch something uh, a little bit more substantial, but. Like I say, it is nice to be catching some fish. We haven't blanked, so that's the main thing. Well, that one in close has not been touched at all. So I'm going to stick a whole squid on it and stick it in close again. Keep an eye on the other one. Yeah, stick a whole squid on this. Tide is racing out now. So I've only got one more cast, I think, on each rod before it's going to be time to pack it up. So I was thinking about dropping this one in close, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hit it out there and then I'll rebate the loop rig. I've got a nice big chunk of crab left that I can split into two baits. Bulk it with a bit of squid and stick that out on the other one in a minute. And that'll be me done. But yeah, let's get this whole squid out there. And there we are, that is the last bait of the session going out now. So I think, well, I can't even remember what I've got on there. So I think I've got a, a squid on the bottom with some crab legs. And I've got a really sweaty, juicy, orange, gunky bit of crab on the top. But let's get this out. We'll give them a nice little soak for 20 minutes or more. And hopefully we can get lucky on the last cast and maybe pull something out. I think we're getting a bite on the whole squid. It's knocked a couple of times and that was a bit more of a pull, but it's difficult to tell because that tide has pulled out now. So there's also a good chance it could just be a bit of swell right out in the distance sort of thing, but I don't know, it looked like a bite. We'll pretend that it's a bite and then when we reel it in and there's nothing there, we'll pretend that we missed it. There we go. A little pouting. I'm going to quickly chuck it back. Hopefully it will survive. If it doesn't, it will go and feed the congas. But it's nice to see a different species anyway. Ah, well there we go. I think it's time to knock it on the head. A couple of guys just came walking past. They've been fishing a bit further down and uh, they've had a very similar evening to me. Uh, quite slow, a few straps. Not One of them had a wrasse. Uh, so it's nice to see a few different species. It's nice to see a pouting, to be honest. Um, but yeah, a bit of a difficult one, really. The, the bites on those strap congas are so small. Um, so you kind of know it's a strap straight away. And they were caning the crab. The other guy said they were caning his, his uh, Joey mackerels. But yeah, for me, it was strap conga fest, really. I think I had six in total in the end. Six straps and one pouch. I'm going to bring this rod in anyway and uh, I'll pack it away and get on back to the van. I'm absolutely starving. I don't know if anyone else is the same. But when I come fishing, I'm like, no, I'll be good. I'll be good. I won't bring any crap with me because uh, normally I bring crisps and chocolate bars and a meal deal, basically. But now I'm going to go home and probably have a cheese toasty sandwich with loads of mayonnaise. But there we are. Bring this one in, pack it away. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry there wasn't any huge fish to show off, but it goes like that sometimes. But until the next one, please take care, stay safe, and maybe I'll see you out there. Cheers.